If you're anything like me, you've probably got chunks of foam like this laying around your shop that aren't quite big enough to do anything with. But fear not. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take these scraps of foam and turn them into fake fireplace logs. To get started, I've cut these scraps down to a consistent length, and I'm going to trim off three of the corners to start them on their way to looking like logs. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Okay, wait a second. Now look, I know that you can just go out and buy logs. I totally get that part. But sometimes you might have something really specific in mind that foam is a better approach than to try and recreate it out of real wood. Or maybe weight is an issue, or are you just looking to get rid of scraps like I was? So if that's the case, then this video is for you. Okay, let's get back to it. For this step, I'm going to use my 3D table from Hotwire Foam Factory, but you could use a saw, a box cutter, or even a serrated knife for this step. The best part about using a Hotwire table is that there's no mess. And when you're tackling a messy project like this one, you have to take advantage of any opportunity to keep your workspace clean. Once I've knocked off the corners, I'll use the hot wire table again to add in some irregularities which will help cut down on shaping later. When I have all my pieces trimmed down, I'll do a quick cleanup and we can start giving the foam some more character. To do this, I'm going to use a handheld rasp, a drywall saw, and a large wire brush to create variation and grain on these pieces, starting with the rasp. If you've watched my tombstone carving video, you'll know that this is an invaluable tool for shaping foam. It's a great way to break the manufactured edges, add gouges, and really transform the foam into something completely different. For this project, I'm using it to rough up the surface and give each piece of foam its own unique shape. Next up, I'll use the drywall saw to make the wood bark. I'll drag the saw blade in a curved motion which will create the ridges and valleys in the foam. This is an important step because it gives our foam the most texture and helps trick the eye by breaking up the rectangular shape even more. When I'm happy with the ridges, I'll switch over to the wire brush to rough up the surface a bit more. This creates thin cracks and softens up the hard edges created by the drywall saw. You can use any of your tools to make the logs more interesting at any point during this step. Just keep it inconsistent to prevent them from all looking the same. Now that I've got all my logs shaped, it's time for a glue up. I'm using hot glue for this step, but you could use your favorite foam adhesive. Because I'm making a log stack for a fireplace, I'm going to add in a spacer block of foam to give me a structure to glue my carved logs onto. This won't be seen, so it doesn't need to be shaped. To make it more interesting, I took one of the logs and snapped it in half to give the stack a bit more visual interest. 
Fill in any gaps with your glue gun and allow the glue to set. Once your logs are firmly in place, it's time to coat them with Monster Mud, which is a mix of exterior latex paint and drywall joint compound. If you're unfamiliar with Monster Mud, there's a link in the upper right corner of your screen and in the video description to check out our video on it. Coat the entire piece with the Monster Mud and set it aside to fully cure. Once the piece was finally dry, I gave it a quick coat of brown paint off camera, and now it's time to add in the burnt areas and ash. I'll start with a black acrylic paint, and we'll use a chip brush to dab the paint randomly across the logs to give it that dark burned look. Then I'll switch over to a white acrylic paint, and we'll dry brush across the same areas to create the appearance of ash. This will help bring out all the details we added and really pulls it all together. You'll notice I'm using the same brush for both colors. As I'm wiping off the excess white paint for dry brushing, it's blending the two colors into a few different shades of gray that helps give more variety in our dry brushing. When you're happy with the dry brushing, you can set it aside to dry and call this one finished. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Leave me a comment with how you'd use this technique and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until next time, go make something.